the COMEX market in terms of silver. I, at, silver is just, just disappearing off the COMEX in, in, in a rapid fashion. I think this market ultimately, ultimately is going to be defined by the inability to source product because it just is not, um, it is not a market that is flush with product. And, you know, I get a lot of heat for this, but I just want to, I want to be very clear that, yeah, there's been decent product for the last three years, but I, I will tell you it is the most difficult part of my job is securing continually rotating product in and out. It's getting harder and harder and harder. And when that moment comes where people are obviously awoken to precious metals as an alternative instead of the people that you and I talk to every day who have been enlightened and awoken to this beforehand, um, who take for granted how easy it is to get it, I think for the other people who come late, even 30 seconds late, in a different story. So, yeah, it's an interesting time, and supply chain problems are, are certainly not immune to this industry. I think the real dent will be made by the commercial bank squeezing the management. That, to me, is where the real dent will be made. And if you look at what happened on the fundamentals in March, this was, I believe, the, the, the wake-up call to the commercial banks because when the nickel market failed and the, the, the LME uh, invalidated this trade for the first time in 140 years of their exchange, and I, I think it really put a damper on the, on the credibility of the LME, I think it, it woke up the commercial banks, and, and I think they're trying to get their house in order by incentivizing the managed money for, through cramming the price down and getting a march, the, the commercials did. And I think the managed money just set up a 40 year high inflation, war every war, uh, a war in the Ukraine, trouble everywhere, the economy is a mess, and yet the prices get maxed out. So not only did they sell their long the commercial banks gladly gobbled up, they went short. And they're, they're massively short. And who went long? The commercial banks. If you take the producer merchant category out of the commercial category, just the banks themselves are, are really long. If you add the producers and, and uh, into the commercial category, which they are, um, you know, they're, they're still long about 5,100 contracts, over 25 million ounces. I can't ever remember seeing that. So you have the most well-funded, well-informed, sophisticated investors on the planet going net long, I believe setting a bear trap for the, the managed money. And it has allowed them, the managed money shorting the price so low has allowed the commercials to cover their shorts. They're doing the dirty work for the commercial banks. The real squeeze will happen on the, the exchanges. And, you know, I think the real squeeze would happen when this new Moscow exchange that that is being bantered about comes about, because all they would have to do, this new Moscow exchange, who, you know, when they came out and talked about it, they said, look, we want to issue an exchange that will fight the manipulation of the West, of the LME and the COMEX. But they're not bitching for the last several years because they're the ones accumulating it. So they're using the West's own stupidity against them. Mm -hmm. The West is suppressing the price and who's gobbling it all and having it all sent home? The East. This is a classic misdirection. They're using the leverage of the West stupidity against us and by accumulating all the commodities. But once they have everything uh, in, in hand, then they'll want to set a real benchmark price. Well, that's the new Moscow exchange they're talking about. As far as silver is concerned, you know, what's happening right now on the exchange is really kind of crazy. We've seen um, somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of um, over 1,400 tons um, uh, uh, that have been taken off of the the COMEX market in terms of silver. Uh, and silver is just is bearing off the COMEX in, in, in a rapid fashion. The open interest right now is right now 1,500% greater than the registered category. So you have a massive rehypothecation in uh, what silver stocks are available uh, to be delivered on the COMEX. We're seeing a metal being bled off the London Metals Exchange at a record pace, so much so that it's the lowest amount of, of silver in the uh, in the in the LBMA vault since they started uh, recording uh, amounts of silver in the vault. Uh, there's less than, I believe, 10,000 tons of silver in the LBMA vault that do not belong to the ETFs. 
Uh, maybe even more startling than that is the long position on COMEX by the commercial banks, something I've never seen before. The commercial banks are net long right now in silver, and they've hoodwinked the managed money into going net short. So when you see the massive drawdowns on the LBMA, the massive drawdowns on the COMEX, where you're seeing in terms of gold drawdowns, look, a few weeks ago, 41% of all the gold kilo bars were drawn off the COMEX in one day. About 175 million ounces are uh, were, were pulled off the COMEX. And so, you know, you're looking at a situation where uh, the biggest money in the world is draining the COMEX, is draining the LBMA. We've seen 100 million ounces backdoored in the last four months out of SLV by the authorized participants. And for the very first time I can remember, last I looked a few days ago, the commercial banks were long about 5,100 COMEX contracts over 25 million ounces. So from the top down, not only is metal being drained from the COMEXs, but you're seeing the most sophisticated investors in the world go net long in silver, which is something I haven't ever seen before. I think it, it portrays for much higher prices moving ahead and probably tougher availability as the bars are being taken off of the exchange. Those bars are what actually makes the blanks that make the sovereign coins, which are getting harder to get too, especially since the queen died, all of a sudden getting even harder to get. This shows the micro fragility of the market. And when I mean micro, I have long felt that from a macro perspective, getting product will ultimately be very difficult in this industry because Rick Rule talks about one half of 1% allocation to precious metals across the entire financial matrix. So if that number changes to, to two and a half percent, which coincidentally would only be a 40 year mean of the price uh, or the allocation rather of metals to the US portfolio, that's a five fold increase in demand when this industry can hardly handle the demand that we have right now. Uh, it will make getting product next to impossible. And I have felt for a very long time, there will be this moment where people are, are awoken. Now, could argue that there's been um, a much more a much greater participation and awakening, if you will, from the mainstream into this industry, but it still represents but the pimple on the elephant's ass. And that's the truth. The big money has no idea uh, about silver and gold yet. Maybe they're beginning to understand that there's something not right to the economy, but when they see their their 401k collapse, when they see their equity portfolio collapse, for whatever that reason may be that in incites that or ignites that 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 precipitous decline they have to come out and notice precious metals and when that moment happens there's so much liquidity out there there's so much money that's been created that it will just overwhelm this industry